We now continue with our third installment of the Palm Beach Playbook, where we bring you the very latest campaign updates courtesy of official Team Trump members Tommy Pickett and Taylor Rogers. So let's dive on in. It's clear President Trump has the momentum and no one is working harder than he is to make America great again. In just the last few days, he held a rally in North Carolina where Tulsi Gabbard joined millions of Americans in becoming a Republican. He also held a town hall in Zubalon, Georgia, and he held a roundtable with Latino leaders in Florida, in addition to many other interviews and campaign events. President Trump is working around the clock, morning, noon, and night, seven days a week, to save America. He can fix the crises that Kamala Harris has created. She has the weakest closing argument in all of American political history to lie about President Trump and to describe how the country is in shambles after nearly four years of hers and Biden's administration. Seriously, take for example, her recent interview on NBC News. I am very clear, cost of groceries still too high. The voters know it, I know it. The idea of the American dream was something that previous generations could count on, not as much anymore. Let me tell you what the Customs and Border Patrol agents need, what the immigration system needs. It needs to be fixed. Part of what is important in this election is really not only turning the page, but closing the page and the chapter on an era that suggests that Americans um, are divided. So let me get this straight. According to her, during her own reign as vice president, prices are way too high. The American dream is gone. The border is broken and our country is divided. Got it. And that interview wasn't even a one-off, by the way. She routinely admits that her administration has been a catastrophic failure. She has created crisis after crisis. And now she's denouncing President Trump's plan for mass deportations of criminal illegal immigrants, which, by the way, is a policy supported by the vast majority of Americans. There is no question that migrants bring... That America is a country that is, it was built... In part by immigrants. But people are concerned who about their come. TPS, their DACA, their. Um, we're talking about uh, mass deportations. I'm not talking about. What do you stand on mass deportations? You, what's, what's your stand there? This, uh, we need smart, humane immigration policy in America mm -hmm. that includes a pathway to citizenship. She's imported tens of millions of illegal immigrants, including violent criminals and gang members, into communities all across the country, where they're showered with welfare, housing, and other government taxpayer-funded benefits intended for U.S. citizens, as those same citizens are brutally raped, murdered, and assaulted by illegals with absolutely no right to be here in the first place. That is not humane. And now she wants to give them mass amnesty, even for illegals who have already been deported. That is outrageous, if not treasonous. And she is desperately and falsely smearing President Trump as a danger to democracy. But when it actually comes to standing by her rhetoric, Kamala Harris is a hypocrite. So what's the latest example? Well, as a reminder, here's what Joe Biden said on Tuesday about incarcerating President Trump, who is about to be democratically elected as president. I know this sounds bizarre. It sounds like if I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We gotta lock him up. Wow, just wow. And what was Kamala's response? Disgraceful silence. Now, Mr. President, do you have any reaction to what the president said about locking him up? That's no surprise, honestly, from a vice president whose administration has weaponized institutions against their own political opponents and whose party has launched one baseless witch hunt after another against President Trump. The Democrat Party is anything but the party of democracy. She is a dishonest hypocrite through and through, and her silence right there proves it. And finally, let's take a look at the latest fantastic ad from Team Trump. Insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. 
We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Joining us now to discuss is Tommy Pickett, the Director of Strategic Communications for the Republican National Committee and the Editor-in-Chief of the Palm Beach Playbook. Tommy, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me on. So I love that ad, absolutely. Way to hi really highlight the contrast. And the thing about Kamala's campaign is she's running from her own past, her own track record. We don't need talking points. We have the proof in the pudding right there. She's been in office for three and a half years. She could have been solving all these problems, but she hasn't been. So what do you make of that latest ad? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. I think that that's spot on. She's been in office the last three and a half years, has yet to explain why all of these problems that she actually helped create she hasn't solved. Well, we know the answer. She hasn't solved them because her policies are the ones that fueled the border invasion, are the ones that fueled price increases, are the one that set the world ablaze. So we know why we have these crises. It's Kamala Harris's policies that created these crises, and President Trump can fix it. So I, I think what we're really seeing the last few days here, especially as she does these interviews in town halls, is the moment that she is asked any sort of follow-up. The moment is no longer a platitude that she says. She has no answer. She can't explain any of her policy positions because she knows that they failed. She can't explain away her record, and she can't explain what she'd do differently than Joe Biden. So right now, there's a clear contrast. Kamala Harris, who has created these problems, and President Trump, who will fix them. Yeah, absolutely. I'd also like to ask you about the point of illegal immigration and border security. Kamala Harris has come out multiple times this week saying that the immigration system in this country is simply broken. And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing right now with this mass migration crisis. But if it's broken, then she must have been the one to break it, right? Because it was working just fine under her predecessor. When President Trump was in office, you know, illegal immigration was way down, border security was way up. We had a plan to start building a wall and we were actually making real progress. So if the illegal immigration system or our system here is broken, then it must have been her and Biden that broke it, right? That's exactly right. And she's been in office all of these years. She's been border czar. She's had a key role on the border, and yet it's still broken, which is a clear indication that she broke it. And honestly, if you look at her policies, I think it's evident that she broke it on purpose because these open border policies have been tried and failed, and she's done nothing to reverse them. President Trump's policies were working on the border. He secured the border, and when he's elected back to the White House, he will secure it again. And I, there's another part of that town, uh, the town hall yesterday that mm -hmm. uh, Kamala Harris was asked about saying, you know, uh, was there any mistake that you made regarding the border with these executive actions that came in, Biden came in, took all these executive actions, reversing all these policies? She was asked, was that a mistake? And she said, no, it wasn't a mistake, which again goes to the fact that all of these positions they took that created the worst border crisis in U.S. history were on purpose. She is saying they weren't a mistake. So if she's elected to the White House, she's just going to double down on this failure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and one thing that's interesting, you would think anybody would be able to understand that. Anybody who's been paying close, close attention, I should say, which means that we have some celebrities who haven't been paying close attention, including now Taylor Swift. And we've also got, uh, you know, Eminem, the rapper. I can't believe he's coming out and endorsing Kamala Harris. And then on top of it all, Hillary Clinton, of course. So the Cheneys, the Clintons, the Obamas are all behind her and now even Eminem. So what do you make of these uh, very strange endorsements coming down the pike? Well, I think it shows that the Republican Party is the party of the people. I mean, we are seeing unprecedented support for President Trump across America, across all these different demographics. And that's why we're seeing the momentum for President Trump, because Kamala Harris is trying to create this artificial momentum with these people coming in and endorsing her. But people can't afford groceries. They can't afford gas. They see the border crisis. These artificial endorsements from these very rich celebrities are not going to change those facts. President Trump is appealing directly to the American people. So the endorsement that we care about are the millions of Americans that are coming out to the polls, voting for President Trump already, making their plan to vote, making sure they get their friends and family out to vote. That's the movement that's going to save this country, everyday Americans. And actually, it goes back to the two conventions. If you look at the two conventions, the DNC versus the RNC, the RNC convention highlighted everyday Americans that were affected by Kamala Harris's terrible policies and also were helped by President Trump's successful policies. That was the focus of the RNC convention. The DNC DNC convention was all about celebrities, was not about the American people, had nothing to offer the American people. And that clear contrast is continuing into the final weeks of this campaign. Yeah, it really is. And I'm so glad you mentioned the endorsement of the American people, because frankly, I don't care what Beyonce thinks. She's going to be, uh, I guess, going out with, with Kamala Harris on Friday. But I really don't care what these out-of-touch celebrities who live in bubbles, who aren't impacted by the day-to-day -day experiences of, of, the, of these policies, right? I don't really care about what they think because they've got private security and mansions, and they don't understand what it's like to be the forgotten American. That was Trump's you know, opening pitch back in 2015. He understands so many of us have been neglected, forgotten about. We are not a priority anymore. And that's the 
whole basis for the America First platform, making us the only priority, once again, of our own government, which shouldn't be a partisan issue, by the way, but it shows really that Democrats are trying to destroy this country and don't even view this place as a nation anymore. So I guess it is. But having said that, I do think it's interesting you bring up the endorsement of the people, because that's what we saw at McDonald's in Pennsylvania last Sunday, right? We saw the American voters coming out to say, I want Trump. He's actually showing us. He's not telling us he cares about us. He's showing us with his actions that he understands us, he loves us deeply, and he's willing to fight for us. And he's even willing to take a bullet to the ear for us. So I really hope that people going into election day can clearly see the contrast between the politician who just throws empty promises at you, Kamala Harris, and the man who has a proven track record of risking his life for your freedom, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a clear contrast. I mean, President Trump, as he often says, did not have to get involved. He didn't have to get involved in politics. He had a great life, right? He was a very successful businessman. He had a successful TV show. He got involved because he wanted to save this country. He wanted to put America first. He wanted to fight for America. And that's what he's continuing to do in the face of all of these different witch hunts, all the assassination attempts, all these fake investigations, the weaponization of the DOJ against President Trump. In the face of all of this, he is still fighting for this country. He's still fighting for the American people. And we're seeing the American people step up and join him in this fight for America. America by making that plan to vote, being part of this movement to save America. That's the foundation of what's going to save this country, the American people stepping up. And I think you're exactly right to point out that a lot of these liberal Democrats aren't affected by their policies. That's why they must support them, because they're not affected when, gro when grocery prices go up. They have oftentimes their own private security, so they're all fine with defunding the police. But the American people suffer the consequences, and the American people are speaking up now. They're saying enough is enough. We can't afford four more years of the absolute absolutely terrible Harris-Biden administration. Absolutely not. You know, there was, a, there was a report that just came out this morning. We spent at least $150 billion on migrants and illegal immigrants just in 2023 alone. Think about what we could do for the American people with that kind of money. And, and they're getting that money from, in some cases, police departments, FEMA. They're literally gutting services for taxpayers to accommodate illegals. And Kamala Harris endorses all of it. And she made this all possible. She manufactured the situation. And so now she's asking for a promotion. And it's so easy. It's a no-brainer to say, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This, what she has done to this country is treasonous. It is completely treasonous and it should be criminal. So I think the contrast going into November is so totally clear. It really is a slam dunk no brainer. So hopefully we'll continue to see the surge. The poll data is looking really good. I'm very optimistic. I've already made my plan to vote and I hope everybody out there has as well. 100%. I mean, that's what it's going to come down to, yeah. making that plan to vote. And I think when we look at the polls, we look at the early vote numbers, the worst possible thing someone can do is say, we've got this in the bag. That's the worst yes. possible thing. We have to have momentum. We have to go into this saying, everyone's got to vote. we got to make sure every single friend and family member has to to get out and vote. We have to make this too big to rig. Swampthevote.com, swampthevoteusa.com, making sure that we make that plan to vote. Get out to vote. Don't look at the polls and say, we've got this. Look at the polls and say, I'm going to join this team, make my plan to vote, and make sure we send President Trump to the White House. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Very well said. And of course, Tommy, we appreciate your time as always. Thanks for having me on.